this evening was like, I love you all for actually showing up here tonight, and I hope you come back because we're here every Thursday. My improvised titles usually have nothing to do with anything, so here we go. The lights pull up behind me, sirens blaring. I've taken all the necessary precautions. Advice from conversations I've had with adults since I was old enough to fight back. Advice like, don't fight back. Stay calm. Keep your hands on the wheel. Yes and no. Don't smile, it's a threat. If you don't know, you don't know. Don't smoke weed in your car. Don't carry without a permit. Keep your music volume down. Keep a generic book, usually young adult, i.e., you know, The Hunger Games, something, something everyone's read, or a Bible in the back seat. Don't think about how literally none and all of these details combined has saved anybody who's ever come before you. I know what I look like, and I know what they think of me, and I know they know who I am. Even if they don't know my name, I know they fear me, because everybody fears change, apparently. I know nothing can save me, because they look at me in the street and wonder how someone as dark as the pavement has the gall to say don't tread on me. Like I've forgotten my place. Like I forgot, like they trademarked the saying. See, I haven't forgotten that they don't fill in the potholes on the street. What makes you think they care about the holes they put in my skin? The lights fill the dead space in my rear view, but he turns his siren off. He steps out of his charger looking like Brad Pitt about Fight Club era, straightens his glasses, and he keeps his hand on his gun as he walks up to the window. And I keep my hand still. I keep my breath calm. I know that I can't control him, but I know what I look like with my head wrap, with my four o'clock shadow, a dress and a t-shirt, leggings that are the same color as my skin, pink shoelaces. I know who I am now, and I know what they think of me, and I've heard it from the moment we landed in California, all the way back to Indiana, even after taking a sabbatical in the Virgin Islands. I refuse to hide from who I am now. And the cost of living is so high, from, f from friends, to family, relationships, business partners. See, nobody wants to hire the queer kid. Nobody wants to house the queer kid. Queer kids can't be happy. We don't even exist. Black queer kids don't exist. If I don't exist, then that means to everybody else, it's with Black queer kids don't exist, I don't exist, and if I don't exist, then that means everybody must think that I'm dead. And this community's been trying to kill me for years. These black folks and these white folks have been trying to kill me for years. This institution has been trying to wipe the smile off my face for years, from the annual fight with homelessness to the lack of scholarships, on top of all the pills that don't work for my mental illness, and banning the one plant that's like electric to water. Don't you remember I'm a Pokemon trainer? It's super effective. I was deemed surplus to requirements when they sent out the school supplies list. So I rolled out my window and I lift the corners of my lips, just so. Do you know why I pulled you over? Shines this light in my face in the brightest of summer days and my cornea goes a little dry, my mouth goes a little dry. Do you have your license and registration, boy? He, disregarding the fact that I don't want to have this conversation with him today. Disregarding the fact that I don't want to have this conversation today, he keeps his hands out of sight as I reach slowly into the glove box as he unhinges the holster and reaches for his steel. And I have flashbacks. I remember riding the bus, reading books about BTK and Casey Anthony, Jody Arias and real life Gone Girls, stories about serial killers, stories of blood and guts, killers who saw blood as sport and kept IDs as trophies. And I think of how random some of those people could be. I think of how they always hurt people who look like the people who hurt them. I think of all the people people I never hurt. I think of how many people have come up to me and told me how dead they would love me to be. I think of how many of them don't know my name. I think of how I've never smiled in their face before. I think of how much anger I don't feel anymore. I think about all the people I've hurt. I think back to when I was seven, the day I stepped into first grade, armed already with more knowledge and curiosity than everybody else around me. They used to say, you had such a vibrant smile. They used to say things like, boys don't do and that was the day. 
That was the day my peers marked me, like I was being pissed on, so that everybody who met me afterward would know with one sniff, and they would smile and grin like I was their best kept secret, take shots as I cowered in fear of my own truth. They knew the truth and I was running from it, smiling behind my books. See, bliss, not knowing, will make you smile. I would learn that everybody knew about me long after I would graduate. Class started 25 years ago, 23 finally out of the closet, and I'm still two hours late. The officer, take, the officer takes a huge sniff, calls for backup. Makes a huge deal to say that he smells weed, but it's me that's his supply. It's my blood that's his real need. And he sees my books. He sees James Baldwin and Toni Morrison and Alice Walker and he sees them all buckled in nice and neat into their child seats and I know that I will never walk again. My curiosity has gotten the best of me. My thirst for knowledge, this quest for equality, it ends the same for everybody. It's the manner in which it happens that becomes an injustice. So I keep my hands on the wheel. I don't say a word. There's no music to turn down. I do not take off my head wrap. I keep my breath calm. He pushes his power into my cheek and he mutters, I'm putting you out of your misery, black boy. I take a deep breath as I prepare to return home and I take Corey's advice, a smile. Mm.